Bonnie Burns and welcome to the Superhero Dog Owners Show. This is episode 21. I am your host, Dom Hodgson. I'm joined by my very good friend, Alex, the video guy. Hello. Sydney's in his bed. We've still got whiskey. And orange juice. And a couple of mince pies left. I think people realise now that we might be recording two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's, that's totally fine. <laughs> it's Christmas. You know, we need to get a couple of episodes in the can because... Uh, because we want to be chilling out over Christmas. And 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 what up? Did you have a nice Christmas, Alex? A lovely Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so what I thought um, what I thought we'd do was, um, by way of a change, is we've we're up to episode 21, you know, so we're not quite halfway through sort of the year of, of episodes, but we we've we've done a lot, you know, we've 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 given away some some really cool information, I think. Mm-hmm. We will continue to be doing that in the new year. We had a good um, podcast interview recording session just the other day didn't we where we we managed to snag another six did, interviews yeah. with some top draw dog trainers and we still have some in the can as well anyway but so what i thought we'd do now is we've had some cool guests already on i thought why don't we do a little recap of of the guests that we've had on and we can maybe go back and and pull out some of the little dog training gems that they gave us and you know if, if you're new to the podcast and you're thinking what the hell's going on here yeah we normally do this in a van but because it's cold and it's winter, we've and Alex keeps moaning about the cold and the winter. We we've come inside, we put the fire on, and we're trying to do a little festive, couple of festive podcasts. Um, but we also have a lot of cool interviews uh, already done. So t- this uh, episode now is going to give you a little a little recap of all of those, and we're going to start with my uh, dog training guru, a very good friend of mine, David Davies. Now I first met Dave when I. I did a John Rogerson course, and which was the kind of dog training course that taught me about dog training. <laughs> and uh, I, where I got my enlightenment from, Dave Davy was with there, and he did a, a scent work demonstration with his dog Hamish. Mm. Now this like blew my mind. Um, not only Hamish's scent detection skills, which were second to none, but also just the relationship that he had with Dave, you know, and the control that Dave had over him. It made me think like, oh my God, that's what I want to have with my dogs, you know? And um, so that was how I met Dave. And I met him because I ended up going on a course because I didn't have any control of the dogs that I was walking, you know? And because I had made a, a mistake that, that a lot of pet dog owners make. And it's a mistake that Dave talked about in the interview as well. So let's hear what he had to say about it. I didn't really have a very good relationship with my dogs. You know, I thought I had, but mm-hmm. really I didn't. And, mm-hmm. and, and that was the... That was like a moment, you know, just watching you with a, a tennis ball, I think it was, <laughs> like Harry Potter casting magic spells, and, you know, and Hamish was just like this little remote control thing and <laughs> going around, and uh, he couldn't take his eyes off you, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so that's where it all started with me, really, with the dog training and, uh, and, and, and trying to get this, this idea of, of building up relationship and, and playing with your dog, you know? So you, you're actually having fun with your dog, and yes. you can be the person who, yes. who, who is the fun for your dog, you know? Yes. So is that, is that something that you that you find yourself still having to, t- to tell all the to time try and teach you know pet dog owners when they come all to the you? time mm. I, I i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people going oh and shaking their heads now with what i'm about to say but the biggest problem and it's because people love their dogs and it's because they think they're giving their dogs a great life and to be fair they probably are mm-hmm. but their sole purpose in life each day for their dog is to go out and find somewhere where their dog can go and play with other people or other dogs. Mm, mm. And your dog really does not need to do that. And I was having a bit of a Donald Trump moment there, wasn't I? (laughs) But I'm passionate about that. Um, Yes, you need to walk your dog around where there are other people and other dogs, Mm. but your dog will not become better behaved with people and with other dogs by being exposed to them all the time. In fact, there's a good chance it'll become worse behaved. It will become better behaved for you the more you do for your dog and the more you provide for your dog to do. And um, if you then look at the breed or type of dog you've got and think what that breed of dog was originally bred to do when man first designed the blueprint of it and try and think of things you can do. That, so if you've got a Labrador, give it some retrieving games and some searching games. Clearly, if you've got a Doberman, which was bred to be a protector, you don't want to be giving it games where you can set it on 
on people. That would be sure. utterly wrong, of course. Mm -hmm. But you can still give it fantastically exciting things to do. And, and you will keep your dog's interest on you. Um, your dog's already learned how to be a dog when it was a puppy going through a canine socialization stage, which is probably an outdated way of describing it now, but that's what it is. And as long as you then make sure that it goes through a stage um, from about eight weeks to about 12, 16 weeks of its life, where you do a lot for your dog and you take your dog everywhere you possibly can. And here's the thing, have it on a lead, because if you've got it on a lead, you'll keep it safe. If you've got it on a lead, you'll show it how to behave. And if you've got it on a lead, it won't be able to practice all the things you don't want it to do when it's 10 year old. And people think that this means you're going to make your dog's life miserable. You're not. You'll make it the happiest dog in the world. Yeah, I... So I was delighted to be able to talk to Dave and because he just lives down the road, it was fairly easy for us to go down, wasn't it? You know, it was, we're going yeah. to go down again and we're going to talk to him about scent work, actually. Um, but we, we're, we're busy people. <laughs> we can't be driving all over the country all the time. So via the power of, of Skype and your technical wizardry, we managed to talk to people remotely, didn't we? You know, And, and the next person that we spoke to is a, a dog trainer from Bury. Uh, she runs a dog trainer school called Wagawuffins. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Alex? I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> she's a, a Cocker Spaniel and a Land Rover fan. And uh, she's all round awesome dog trainer. And uh, this was Jane Arden. We talked about connection and cockers. And she gave us some really good insights into sort of emotion and mindfulness in dog training. Because uh, she has a mindful course that she, that she runs. So, so, so I, 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 th this was really interesting, I think. I thought it was as well. Something a little bit different, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Let's see what you have to say. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, it, it, emotions in dog training. <clears throat> yeah, we, um, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent because of people who I've learned from, like David Davies, John Rodgen, of trying to use emotion in dog training, you know, so you're not, um, I don't know, I think the traditional, for some people, I think when they think about dog training classes even, you know, they think about the traditional kind of, Dogs sit, you know, do this, and you know that's it's. But it, but the more you, the more you can use emotions in your dog training and, and show your dog that you're you're happy and you know you you enjoy his company and you you, you encourage him to do stuff. The, the stronger the relationship can be, can't it? You know. So t tell us a little bit about sort of what what you've been working on with the the emotional impact and, and learning for dogs. Okay, so looking at people becoming aware of how their emotions impact the dogs and how our dogs are connected with us. So things like if people are stressed, if people get frustrated, uh, often you find if people get frustrated with their dogs, then their dogs will avoid them. And then it ends up a little bit of a catch-22 situation because the more, frustrate, the more the dog ignores them, the more frustrated they get. And I often apply it to if we look at it in, in a human context, often, you know, if, if your partner comes home from work and they're in a real foul mood and they've had a bad day, you're probably going to do one or two things. You're either going to go out and avoid them <laughs> and just leave them to it, or, or you might try and lighten them up. And I think what our, our dogs often do the same. So they either start fooling around and jumping all over you, which usually doesn't help the person who's frustrated. Leave me alone! <laughs> <laughs> or they... Or they actually avoid them and it's and it's getting people to understand that sometimes their dog is actually just behaving in that way because of the way that they feel and they're acting. One of the things I run a mindful course, one of the things we do on the mindful course is we get people to spend a minute thinking about all the negative stuff. Um, things like thinking about, you know, what's the M62 going to be like on my way home? Have I got shopping to do? What time have I got to get to work tomorrow? And all those life things that we tend to worry about. And then we get them to train. We get them to then get up and train the dog. And you usually find it goes to pot and real interesting stuff like sometimes the hand lookout function, like clicking clickers and stuff like that, because they've they've got this negative mindset, so they're struggling to concentrate and we've had where the dog won't make eye contact with the owner because the owner's thinking about a lot of negative thoughts so obviously that will impact on their body language and then what we do is we get them to do a mindful meditation where they actually clear their mind of all the rubbish and then they apply themselves 100% to the dog and it's really really interesting how significantly different and how successful they will be in what they aim to achieve yeah 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 
I suppose that would apply to all aspects of life, wouldn't it, really? But Absolutely. especially, uh, especially yeah. dog training as well, yeah. Next on the list, Alex, we, we ended up hitting the road again. We didn't go very far. <laughs> we were very lucky because um, Sue McCabe is a, a local dog trainer. She works in Newcastle and she runs Mutamorphosis Dog Training School. And this was actually, by views, this has been one of our most popular podcasts. Oh, really? Yeah, really popular. Um, and I don't know if it was because Sue was just so awesome or was because of the stuff that she was talking about. Probably both. But we talked about how to spot and avoid the recipe for dog aggression. Now, you know, it, dog aggression isn't just something that you can fix, but Sue did give us some really good insights about how if your dog is reactive to other dogs, if he's too interested in them, if it's spoiling your walk, there are some things that you can do with your dog safely to, to get him more interested in you and to, to kind of get his focus back on you um, and make him less bothered about, about other dogs that he sees. So, uh, so this, I think this was really insightful what she had to share. Is there some things that people can do if they, if they recognise that, that their dog may have an aggression issue? Is there some really simple things that they can do? I don't think there's ever a simple answer where aggression is concerned because mm -hmm. it's just so complex and there's so many different forms of aggression. Mm -hmm. I think more importantly, if I could direct owners to recognise how not to put the ingredients for the recipe together in the first place, if yeah. that's okay. Um, the reason there, I think the reason, and I'm not the first person to say this, I mm -hmm. think you and I, Dom, have talked yeah, about yeah. the fact that there isn't really anything original in, mm -hmm. in dog training, but I certainly would agree with the, the, the concept that the reason there's a huge increase in dog to dog aggression is because people tend to take the word socialization as meaning a free for all. Yeah. And they've become so obsessed with their dogs having doggy buddies mm. that they don't recognize that as they're raising their dog with lots of play dates and lots of dog interaction and unbridled, uncontrolled playing and particularly rough physical play, the two camps that dogs fall into it, not every dog, because there mm. are some dogs who can do all of that and it never causes yeah, yeah. a problem. But the two camps that behaviour problem dogs would fall into would be either learning to be a bully mm -hmm. or learning to be bullied. Mm. And both of those camps will lean towards dog aggression as they get older yeah, or could yeah. lean towards dog aggression as they get older. Mm -hmm. Owners want their dogs to be little humans mm -hmm. and they love the idea of daycare and play dates and, and, yeah. and social life. Social life. Yeah. And actually it's great to socialize your dog, but socializing your dog does not mean that your dog runs across the park to greet every single dog he sees. Mm -hmm. Your child doesn't do that with no, every strange no. child they see. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit strange that people have become that way inclined. And I do think it's contributing definitely towards the dog aggression rate. Yeah, so that was super interesting from Sue and obviously really useful because loads of people have watched it. You know, if you have a dog that is reactive, go back, watch episode 10 with, with Sue McCabe. Go back and watch all the episodes. <laughs> you know, you're going to learn something. We're trying, to, we're trying to entertain, but we're trying to give away some, some good information as well, aren't we, with all the oh, podcasts? I think, yeah, I think we are. Um, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I think you're learning a I'm, lot as well. I can't keep up. <laughs> so much to learn. It's definitely, really good. definitely. Um, so then we went. Um, then we went stateside, and we invited Megan Carnes on from uh, the College Scholar. She writes the College Scholar blog as well, which I'm a big fan of. And Megan talked like so much our language. It was. Oh yeah, wasn't it? yeah. It was, it was all... like all, well, it's like we'd known each other, and and like we'd oh, just singing from the same hymn sheet. Yeah, definitely. Totally. And you know, play with your dog, and you know, celebrate your mistakes, all this kind of thing. That was all. And so, so here's a little clip from our chat with Megan. So, if there's someone listening to this podcast now, you know, they're watching us, and they they, they hear us talking about motivating the dog, you know, and they wish they could motivate their dog more, like a dog trainer. I think some people think that we have like magical powers, but we don't really. We just mess about and be stupid with the dogs you know how can uh, you know what, what would be three things that they could try and do with their dog at home to help them have a better connection and have more fun with their dog easy things sure. i think um my first piece of advice would be don't force the issue so if your dog doesn't want to play with you shoving the toy in their face is not going to get them to <laughs> want it anymore it's going to probably make a negative association. So instead, just be more interesting, make the toy more interesting. Um, but for sure, don't force the issue. I would say celebrate the small successes. Mm. So for me, I'm big on just rewarding engagement and focus, just rewarding my dog for being with me, mm -hmm. as opposed to asking for yeah. a ton of obedience right off mm. the bat. I think if we start small and celebrate the successes, it will make our dog 
uh, want to engage with us more often. Yeah. Um, and then I would say, don't worry about what other people think about you. That's the hardest piece of advice for uh, getting owners to play with their dogs because they're so concerned about looking foolish. And I always tell them, you know, are you more concerned with a complete stranger or the dog at, at the end of your leash? Because we're all here because we love dogs. So, I mean, we have to make those dogs a priority and we have to stop worrying so much about what other people think. Yeah, definitely. No, that's fantastic advice. I always recommend people, um, you know, if they are really nervous, just stay at home in your sitting room, shut the curtains and just be stupid there. Nobody can see you, you know, you'll, and then you'll quickly see how much fun it is, won't you, with your dog. And, 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 and then when you get a bit more confident, then take it outside. But yeah, that's uh, re really good advice. So that was Megan. Yeah, if you want to find out about more what Megan does, just Google the College Scholar blog and, um, and there'll be loads of interesting stuff comes up there. She, she tells a great story as well. It's not just the, it's not just the teaching, it's kind of the way she, tell, oh, exactly. the way she tells the monarchs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we haven't gone east, we went west. Is that right? I think so. <laughs> Depends if we went from America. Anyway, anyway yeah. we've been anyway, all over the world. <laughs> we did. We went the other way. Um, and we spoke to Shireen Merchant, who is one of India's leading dog trainers. She has been trained, you know, John Rogerson was one of her mentors as well. And she had loads of really good stories. We picked out her fridge story, how she trained a dog using a fridge. Um, and also her top three tips for how you can play, bond and have a bit more fun with your dog. So here they are. Tell me a story about, you know, a typical behaviour case that you, you might have dealt with lately and maybe it's in the last couple of weeks or something and, 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 and how you dealt with it. Well, I've had an interesting couple of cases over the years. I think one of the most um, interesting cases that I had was uh, one of these uh, fancy socialites she called me up at some point in time and she said, I have this big problem. I have this little Shih Tzu in my house and he's guarding the refrigerator because we keep his caviar in the refrigerator. <laughs> so is there something you can do about it? So I said, of course, you, you know, we can work on the guarding issue, all of that. And we set an appointment to meet. She calls me up the next day and says, my father thinks it's demeaning to the dog to see a shrink. <laughs> so I said, well, unless I meet you, I can't really help you. So she said, well, I'll figure this out. So I get a call back from her after four days and she says, I don't need your help anymore. I have found a solution. I said, this is super. I'm, I want to know what kind of a solution you found because it's great that you managed to, you know, put a biting dog correct in five days. She said, yeah, the simplest solution we found. We bought the dog his own fridge. So now he guards his own fridge and he leaves ours alone. <laughs> That is, that, it's, hey, it's very practical. You can't say the other, they're definitely, you know. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't argue with that. No, no, yeah. They're often the most simple solution is, uh, yeah. is right in front of you. It's not always to buy another fridge for the dog, but yeah, that's a brilliant story. Fantastic, fantastic. So that was Shireen. How funny was that fridge story? Oh, man, I couldn't believe it. I, I never heard <laughs> something so ridiculous. <laughs> but it, was it worked. It, well, exactly, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. If it works, you know. I'm not saying go buy a fridge, but you know, um, you know, if it works. So that was it. I hope you've enjoyed that little recap of the interviews that we've had. We've got a ton more interviews going to come up in, in 2017. Um, next week, we're going to be talking to uh, another local dog training friend of mine called Rebecca Ashworth. She runs Raven River Agility up in Morpeth. Um, and she just opened a, a new centre as well. Um, so we, we're going to go and see her and have a chat with her. So that's it. I hope you got some value from that. If you did, then go back and watch the other episodes. If you want to kickstart your New Year's dog training with a bang and put it on steroids, then you should definitely order a copy of my best-selling dog training book. This is How to Be a Dog Superhero. It's full of practical, actionable dog training advice. You can read the book, you'll be entertained, and then you'll be able to start putting it into practice with your dog straight away. That's what people tell me anyway, Alex. That's um, true. If you, if you want to get a free copy of my book, then you should think about joining my inner circle. Because my inner circle, I will not only tell you what to do to have a better relationship with your dog, I'll actually show you as well. And we have a, you get a 12 page newsletter through the door, um, once a month, 5,000 word newsletter. You get access to all the videos in the online area. There's tons of videos, how to play, how to find your dog's kryptonite, how to play games with your dog, how to teach your dog tricks. It's all in there. Uh, you get access to me personally inside our private Facebook group as well. 
And I'm actually doing a special offer, Alex. Oh. If people join before the end of this month, so before the end of 2016, then they will not only get this month's ish issue of the newsletter through the door, they'll also get the last two months as well. Oh, yeah? awesome. So that's Good like idea. you get three newsletters. Um, and I'll also throw in a, a free um, Skype call with me as well, yeah? So we can chat over, um, you know, what kind of problem you have with your dog. We can get to the bottom of it, and I can set you on the right track with your dog straight away. So that's Brilliant. That, that their bonuses, they, but they disappear, those bonuses, at the end of this month, yeah? And I probably won't be doing those again. Yeah. You'll be too I'm, busy. Yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. So that's a, that's a 15-minute Skype call with me as well. Um, so if you, if you want to do that, then go to www.mydogsuperhero.com forward slash inner circle. We've almost at the end of 2016, Alex. Good grief. I want to thank you for all of your help. No problem. Thank you for having me, Dom, as a, as a guest on the show. <laughs> it's, you're very welcome. We're going to be back in the van very soon, though. <laughs> no, that's fine. It'll be warm enough. We'll be fine. It will, it will. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, then please subscribe to the show. Tell your friends about it. Share it in your Facebook groups that you're in. And uh, yeah, we'll see, you. we'll see you in 2017. And if we don't see you through the week, we'll see you through the window. Oh, before we go, we're going to leave you with some of our outtakes. You forgot about that. Oh. Yeah, we're going to leave you with some of the outtakes. Alex has put together a little collection of... Um, Couldn't help myself. There's ...mistakes so that he made. I made some of them, mainly him. Oh, you mean uh, <laughs> We put together a collection of outtakes. So we'll leave you with that, and we hope you enjoy those as well. So, how awesome was that? Yeah. <laughs> I say the same thing all the time. I can't keep saying that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. So you don't want me to look at that one at all? No. You know that I will now, don't you? <laughs> I'm not Phil Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right, You've got right, more air than me. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, I'll f No, I never say it. I'll, I'll just leave that. We'll just say she, she's a vet nurse, yeah? No. Yeah, you have to say Rob College. Dear Rob, all right, okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, uh, right, hang on. What's the next question, buddy? Um, talk, right, we'll go back in time now. Yeah. What do we normally do now? That's quite nice, wasn't it? What were you up to, mate? Uh, 11 minutes 20. Oh, so what's it again? What were you saying there? You want to slide into something? Yeah. Nah, fuck it. We shouldn't be doing we're it. We're not uh, the BBC, you know. We just, <laughs> my show, we see what yeah, we want no, on it. <laughs> no, no, okay. You, t you, t you, uh. Yeah? Great. That was quite all right, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. It was pretty good and cheap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Excuse me. <laughs> we'll see you through the window. Class. <laughs> Absolutely stonking, isn't it? <laughs>